the next guest, which is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is ord-oracle.com. Tim comes on to the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday uh, to give us some of his expert analysis. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, happy to have you. We can, we can cover the S&Ps or we can cover gold first. Yeah, um, why don't we do the S&Ps first because I know... You know, everyone's waiting on the gold, so we got to save the best for last. You know, I, I got that last email right. from you. Is that what you want to go over first? Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, we, uh, I don't know how to lead it see here. Um, chart four, chart. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we can do that one first. Okay, so that's with the um, daily 14 SRI yeah, we'll, and the daily SPY. Yeah. So I kind of combined two indicators here. Uh, to try to figure out what's what may happen near term, but the, the bottom window is the uh, daily National Association of Active Investors Managers Exposure Index. So, in other words, when that thing's above 100, you got a, a on the right there. You have a scale from basically zero to 110, and when it gets over 100, just basically that's that's their exposure. So, last. Um, I think it was July. No, I don't know. It was it was the last couple of days, anyhow. And that uh, not to, what's today um, Tuesday, so it'd probably be uh, late last week. The exposure index hit almost 104. In other words, 100. The National Association of Active Investors Managers were basically 100 percent, 104 percent long. So there were four percent on margin, give or take. And so in the past, I've uh, noted that. Uh, not all of them, but with red lines. The only reason why I put those red lines in there, uh, the, the, so follow, follow me here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The top window is the RSI 14 for the daily SPX. And whenever time it gets above 80, that's usually never the final high. That's usually a timeout in an uptrend. It's never a top. It's just usually it's got a lot of momentum. And the market usually takes a breather and starts going up again. Uh, how long that breather is, I'm trying to determine. And that's the reason why I got both those National Association Vector uh, Active Investment Manager Exposure Index and the RSI on the same chart. So one's uh, sailing, one's, which is the bottom window, says it's kind of leans bearish. You get that many uh, active uh, managers over 100% long, that's usually kind of a <laughs> frothy market. Yeah. And that's what's going on right now. But you got the RSI hitting over 80, which says, in general, we're going to continue higher. But that continue higher could be a month or two or three months from now. Well, I labeled the times when the National Association of Active Investment Managers reached over 100%, and the daily RSI reached over 80. And those are the lines across the chart there. And when that happened, the least time went sideways was back in uh, 2024, it looks like a January, and went sideways for a month. All the other times went over a month. And I'm thinking we're going to hit a consolidation here. We're probably hitting one right now. And I'm thinking this consolidation could last actually into September, maybe in October. And previous cases, when both were triggered here, where the RSI hit 80, investment managers hit over 100%, you know, sometimes you went sideways for several months. Mm -hmm. And only in one case, you went sideways for a month. So it kind of reinforces my idea that probably we're in a trading range that may last all the way into October. Uh, so that's what I'm coming to the conclusion mm -hmm. because, uh, because of these two indicators climbing uh, together. So that's the reason why I want to point it out. So this is probably not the time to be long here. And that's, uh, we're even up a little bit today, but volume is not really big today. So I'm thinking we're hitting the consolidation right now. Totally. So I think uh, 30 days from now or even a week from now, we'll be lower than where we are right now. Yeah, we have a lot of shorts so, in the den, too, on the market. So, uh, yeah, I don't uh, So, um, all right. So we went through that. Did, do you want to go to chart one from there? Um. Well, here's, uh, we can go to chart four. We're kind of going backwards here. Perfect, yeah. Uh, this is uh, the weekly association, okay. uh, or the, the National Association of, of uh, Active Investors Managers. And uh, there I got the lines drawn again. 
but it, that's on a weekly time frame, so um, that doesn't really add to the the picture much. The next window, which is uh, or the next chart, which is chart five, shows those RSI uh, above eighty, in which I said there's never uh, the last high. So again, chart seven uh, covers both of that, and chart six here. See what I got? Chart six. Oh, okay. Let's go to chart six. Perfect. Yep. Uh, this is this is a so I'm thinking we're hitting a high in this vicinity right now, and where can we go? Well, um, I've got trend readings anywhere from basically 1.2 or higher. In other words, I got some trend readings there, 1.19. That's close enough. But when you get trend readings above around 1.2 or higher, that's panic, and panic only shows up at lows. And we had a bunch of panic readings right around that 540 area on the SPYs. And the market kind of built a base, and we talked about it on your show that I was looking for a rally out of that time, or out of that area. And sure enough, we did. So now we're up into an area where I think we're going to consolidate. Well, the most likely place for consolidation to, to go is back down into that panic area. Once the panic area starts forming panic on the trend, it will continue to do that. So... If we get down to 540, which we probably will, the trend most likely will start jumping up about 1.2 again. That will suggest uh, support. Yeah. I hear, I hear the music. Absolutely, Tim. Stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, we were just... Uh, looking at that panic trend level on the SPY chart. I want to see uh, where else you want to look at. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to say a couple more things about yeah. it. Uh, the bottom window, as you notice, the top window is the SPY. And it started to rally basically the first part of July. And if you notice, the bottom window, the uh, uh, VIX was going up pretty much the same time. Normally, when the SPY, SPY is going up or SPX is going up, you went to really the SPY or the VIX either goes sideways or down. And if it goes up along with the S&Ps, that's usually a bearish sign. So we got some bearish signs by the VIX. Also, yesterday's or yesterday's trading tested the previous high of last Friday, and it did so on about eyeballing here. It looks like about 20% lighter volume. And the testing on previous high on, on at least 10% lighter volume shows uh, that previous high has resistance. Now, we're trying to rally today, but we haven't touched a new high. So it kind of reinforces the idea that we're probably volume studies and VIX studies suggest we're probably hitting some sort of a high. Not a huge decline here, but it's, uh, it works out about 3.5% if we do get the pullback down to 540. So, um Pretty much done with the S and P's. Well, Tim, let me ask. We have um, some Our questions credit. from some of our viewers. Do you have any opinion with, with this kind of outlook and the potential rate cuts in September? Or are you just kind of looking at you know basically the technicals and seeing we're at some certain saturation point? Uh, well, I see the market over the next three months basically. Probably in October is just kind of sideways. I see, and I don't look for uh, for any big decline. I, I think we're going to hit 540, and we're going to go right back up and probably test uh, you know the high right where we are right now. So it's going to be, I think, more of a sideways movement um, on a bigger time frame. So I think we'll see probably in August uh, the 565 area again where we're we're hitting right now. And in October, we're probably going to see 540 again, so or September. So it's just, I think it's just a uh, sideways trading range. No real damage uh, to the downside, but, you know, it just builds a cause. We're just flipping sideways here. So, uh, right on. This is, you know, actually, if you even stayed long here, uh, you probably wouldn't get hurt much other than at worst case 5%, but it looks like to me it'll probably be, you know, three and a half, four at most. So perfect nothing real, but it just it, it'll be more frustrating than anything. So yeah, no, um, I hear that. We, we got time to do the gold market. Absolutely, here, I, think. I think we need to tear in the gold too. Let's see it. All right, I have the chart All two right. up. GDX. Yeah, chart one. Uh, you know, right. it's kind of a repeat. We talked about it on your show. Uh, this is a monthly chart. This is my opinion, the holy grail. To get this thing turned bullish is really a good sign for for 
a longer term because most of these signals that either bearish or bullish, at least a year and sometimes three, four years. Uh, the last signal was generated before the current signal was back in 2021 and went down until, you know, basically May of 2024, which it flipped up. So I'm thinking we're going to at least go up for another year here, maybe uh, two years. So we're good all this year and probably good most of the next year for a bull gold market because the – momentum has flipped up on the advanced decline and up down volume uh, indicators for GDX and so you got momentum uh, once momentum starts going one direction especially on a monthly time frame it usually proceeds in that monthly direction uh, for a, a long time until you get to some sort of exhaustion and, and I don't know where the uh, GDX is going to go where the high is the next upside resistance we've got up around 45 which we're Again, approaching pretty fast, but bigger trends up. That 45 won't be the final high, but it'd probably be some sort of a resistance. So let's flip to the short term chart. See where we are in page or uh, graph two. Yep. And this is the uh, the bottom window is the 15 day average of the up down volume, and the next window higher is the 15 day average of the advanced decline, both for GDX. And so, again, this is just momentum indicators. It kind of ma- it measures uh, the up volume compared to down volume, advanced decline compared to uh, or advanced compared to the decline. So basically, when both those two indicators are above minus ten, you got an uptrend. And all that blue area across this chart shows when that happened. And the pink areas is when those uh, two indicators are below minus ten. And we've been above minus ten since. Uh, beginning of March, it looks like, and we're still way above minus 10. You know, we're coming in, one's like 24, and the other's around 29. So that's pretty strong, uh, not really showing any weakness yet or anything. So even though this market's kind of really barreling ahead in a big way, internally, so far, it remains uh, decent. We're not showing, as this, you know, if GDX is going up and those two indicators are going down, that would be a time to start to worry, and so far that hasn't happened. So higher highs, uh, even on a short-term basis for GDX. Um, we can go to chart three here. Yeah. Pulling up right now. Right. Got it. Yeah, this is a kind of a real big view. This chart goes back to like 19, or actually 1999, I guess. But the middle chart, is the uh, weekly HUI gold ratio. And you can see I got a blue trend line connecting the highs going all the way back to 1996, and I got a circle in red that we broke above that trend line. And so that trend line, you know, is, what, 30 years or better? Uh, uh, Yeah, 30 years or close to it. And we finally broke above that trend line. So the character of the market is, is probably changing here. And we're going to see... Gold stocks outperform gold probably over the next one and a half years or even longer. Uh, so this is kind of a big development because these gold stocks really haven't done anything for basically about 10 years. It just, since the 2012 top, they just kind of drug around the bottom. So that whole scenario, I think, is starting to change. We got a lot of these penny stocks that are turning up on the monthly time frames. But what I want to really point out on this chart is the RSI for the weekly HU gold ratio. And what I will point out is when this RSI for this ratio gets up around 70, which I noted uh, with uh, parallel or uh, blue lines across the chart, usually gets some sort of a consolidation. You can look where that consolidation happened, which is the top window, which is the weekly RSI. It does a good job picking out the highs pretty well. And so RSI right now is around 67 uh still quite a ways from that real it's getting it's honing in on that 70 area but you know we could stall in the market for a week and that rsi will come down so it doesn't mean we're going to hit that you know by friday or something this is a weekly chart but it could happen sometime in uh july or august that we get some sort of a high we'll have to wait and see but uh that's one clue that you're probably going into Kind of exhaustion move to the upside when the RSI 70 
reaches or RSI of the HUI gold ratio on a weekly time frame reaches above 70. And so don't know when that'll happen, but um, something to watch for. Fantastic. Tim, thank you as always. Uh, we will see you Thursday, guys. If you want to see more from Tim Ord, you just go on ahead to the Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a check out. Tim, thank you so much for joining me today. Great. Thank you. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.